Hello everyone, welcome to our broadcast today. It's such a joy to have you with us. We're excited about today's lesson. I believe you're going to enjoy it. And I have a special guest with me today, my oldest daughter, Jerry Ann. Welcome, Jerry. Thank you for having me. I'm well, excited I'm so glad to be you're here. Here. And I'm looking forward to hearing what you have to say. Thank you. You know, today we're going to be talking about you're somebody special to God. What a powerful thought. You're somebody special to God. And you know, I wrote on my notes that the very first thing that I want to tell you is this. You are God's most prized possession. Think about that. You are God's most prized possession. Now, I know for many of you, that may be very hard for you to imagine. And of course, you're basing that on what you've done in your past, you know, the kind of life that you've lived. But you know, that doesn't matter because God is a loving God, a forgiving God. You know, if God wasn't a loving God and a forgiving God, I certainly wouldn't be uh, sitting in this studio today. If God was going to hang on to our past, He wouldn't be using me as He uses me today. So the beautiful thing is, no matter what you've done, no matter what your past is like, God considers you something special, particularly when you make Jesus Lord of your life and you allow him to make you a new creation. Isn't that true? Well, the enemy wants to bring up your past all the time, yeah. but God never does. Once you've gone to him and asked for forgiveness, then Psalms tells us that he remembers your sin no more. That's right. But the enemy wants to keep bringing up those things, yeah. but your heavenly father doesn't remember it anymore. He doesn't. And you know, you mentioned Satan, he brings it up, people bring it up, mm -hmm. and then you bring it up yourself. Right. And if you go to the Word of God, and like you said in the book of Psalms, it says that God remembers our sins no more. So if he's not going to remember, why should we? Right. But you know, so often people won't forgive themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, they keep bringing up what they did in their past, and we all have a past. Right. We all have things that we're not proud of. I have things that I've done in my past that I'm certainly not proud of. I wish I could go back and, and do things differently, but that's the past and it's under the blood. Mm -hmm. And praise God, God has forgiven me and he's forgiven you, he's forgiven you. And the beautiful thing is he'll give you a fresh start, a new beginning. Right. But the first thing you need to understand is this, you are somebody special to God. And let me tell you why. It's not because of anything you've done. It's all because of what Jesus has done. Isn't yes. that right? Listen Amen. to this scripture, Dad. It is so awesome. <clears throat> Isaiah 43 in the message, it says, Forget about what's happened. Don't keep going over old history. Be alert and be present. I'm about to do something brand new. It's bursting out. Don't you see it? There it is. It's Praise saying God. forget about awesome? what's happened because yeah. God doesn't remember it. So yeah. why do you keep bringing it up? Yeah. Now, I know you've had to deal with that in your own personal life. How did, how did you deal with it? You know, uh, the past and, and Satan kept bringing up thoughts and, you know, and shortcomings and all that. And, and you've dealt with it and you've overcome it. Yes. And God's using you in a great way. So I, I know there are a lot of other people that are going through the same thing. What did you do? Right here. That's the answer. Yeah. That's the answer. I got in this word. Yeah. I knew what you thought about me or what mom thought about me, um, but I had to see for myself what yeah. the word of God said about me and take it to heart. And when those thoughts of insecurity and rejection and low self-esteem would come up, I would get in this word. It became my everything, my life source. Mm -hmm. And I would forget about what Jerry thought about herself or what other people may have thought about me. And I got in this word and I found out exactly the way Jesus thought of me and the way he sees me. He doesn't look at me through my past mistakes. Right. You know, my, heavenly, uh, my earthly father does not look at me through my past mistakes. So imagine how much more our heavenly father does not look at us through our past mistakes. But this is the answer. This does not just sit on my nightstand. Mm -hmm. It's my life. And I get in it and when Satan tries to come and bring me thoughts of the past or things I've done or you'll never do this or remember when you did this, I say, oh no, that's not what my Lord says. That's not what the Bible says. And I begin to confess what Jesus says about right. me. You know, I remember one time back in my early walk with the Lord and, there, you know, I was had gone into full-time ministry and 
and it and it seemed like I reached a place and it almost felt like the bottom fell out and now I'm feeling like a failure you know I'm thinking why did I ever leave Brother Copeland's ministry you know why didn't I stay there where I was safe and secure instead of launching out into this ministry and and uh you know, and there's so many uncertainties, and now I'm responsible for, for paying all the bills and believing God for the money and all that, and it just seemed like things were drying up for a, a season. I've been, I mean, I hit the ground running, mm -hmm. and it's like I hit a wall. And so I remember one day, I mean, I just loaned my mind to the devil, you know, and he's telling me what a failure I am. You're going to fail. You failed in business. You'll fail in this. You'll fail in that. And, and I'm listening to that. And I kept hearing the Holy Spirit say, you better get a grip on this. Mm -hmm. You better begin to speak the word. You tell the devil what the word says. Mm -hmm. I knew to do that. But at the moment, you know, I wasn't, I was just sitting there listening to all these lies. And finally, you know, it got so intense. And I heard the Holy Spirit say, all right, if he's going to talk about your failure, talk about his. Mm -hmm. I said, what do you mean his? He said, reminding of Calvary, reminding of the cross. He thought when he took Jesus to the cross that he had won, particularly when Jesus cried out, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Satan thought he had defeated the Son of God, thought he had defeated God, and he fell for that as we say in the South, hook, line, and sinker. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says, had the princes of this world known, they wouldn't have crucified the Lord of glory. Right. And he says, you talk about a failure. Satan is the biggest failure in the existence of the universe. Mm -hmm. he said So just remind him of his failure. Right. So I said, well, Satan, if you want to talk about failure, let's talk about yours. I heard him say so clear, I don't want to talk about it. Mm -hmm. I said, no, you brought this up. You're going to hear it. Mm -hmm. And I just kept bringing up what a, what a idiot he was thinking he could defeat God. Right. And then the Lord said, now, while you've got him there, don't just stop talking to him about his failure. Bring up his future because it's not too bright either. Mm -hmm. So I said, Satan, my future's bright. I'm headed for heaven. You're headed for a lake of fire. And I'm telling you, after talking about Satan's past and bringing up his future, all those thoughts left and I got up and began to rise up in the power of God and I didn't fail and I've been a success ever since. Amen. But the devil will do his best to try to uh, throw you a curve, so to speak, mm -hmm. with your past right. and, and see if you'll fall for it mm -hmm. and then just beat you over the head with it. Well, it's like he sets up little traps and setups along the way just to see if you're going to fall for it. And you may have gotten free mm -hmm. in an area, but he'll just throw something out there to see if you're really still free. Yeah. And it's your responsibility to, when that negative thought or that you know obstacle comes up, that you take authority immediately and begin to speak what the Word says. Yeah. And don't entertain that thought for That's one right. moment. That's right. One moment. I want to read something to our viewing audience from Psalm 8, verses 3 through 5. Now... I picture David out on the balcony of the palace and he's overlooking, you know, the, the handiwork of God. He looks up into the sky. He sees the stars. He sees the moons, uh, the moon rather. And it says, when I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars, which thou hast ordained. He's speaking to God. What is man that thou art mindful of him? Mm -hmm. Now, what I, what I see happening with David is this. He's looking at, at the majesty of God, the magnificence of God, and then this thought hits him. Why would somebody like you have anything to do with somebody like us? Mm -hmm. In fact, the message translation says right here, why do you bother with us? Why take a second look at our, our way? Mm -hmm. In other words, we're, we're, we're human beings. You're deity. You're creator. Your, your, your majesty. Why would somebody like you want, want to do or have anything to do with somebody like us? But then God answers him and says this, for thou hast made man a little lower than the angels. Now that's what the King James says. But in the little Hebrew, it actually says that God has made man 
a little lower than Elohim. And that's the name for God, which means creator. So what the Hebrew is actually telling us is this, that God made man a little lower than himself. Mm -hmm. You're a higher category than the angels, as far as the Bible is concerned. God made man a little lower than himself. Remember Genesis chapter 1, beginning in about verse 26 through 28, and God said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. Notice he didn't say, let us make man uh, in the image of angels and maybe just a little lower than them. He said, no, let's make man in our image and our likeness. And so here God is revealing to David that you think you're nothing, but I think you're something. Mm -hmm. In fact, God is saying, in fact, I think you're something special and I've made you a little lower than myself. Now, that means that creation will always be a little lower than creator. Mm -hmm. Creation can never become greater than creator. And so he reveals to David that we're created in the image of God. Then he goes on to say, and I have crowned man with glory and honor. That means that God has pronounced his blessing upon us. He's given us his favor. He's given us his love. That means that you and I have the right to walk through the earth with our heads held up high, knowing that God loves us, God's on our side. There's not a thing that we could ever do that would cause him to love us any less. Now, you know, we may do things that are not pleasing to him. Did you ever do anything not pleasing to me? Me? You? <laughs> you know, I mean, there may be things we might do that are not pleasing to him, but it never changes his love. Right. And it never changes my love for you or your sister or your, or your children or her daughter. No matter what they do, I am going to love them forever. Now, obviously, I'd prefer they please me. But when they don't, that doesn't mean you're out of the family. We don't love you anymore. We're done with you. No, and that's not the way God is either. You are not out of the family because you made a mistake. Even as a believer, even as a Christian, and you've made a mistake, that does not mean that God just kicked you out of the family. You still have royal blood flowing through your veins. You're an heir of God. Yes. You're a joint heir with Jesus. All you need to do is just go before him and say, Father, I missed it. You mm -hmm. know what? That's what the word sin means, to miss the mark. mark. Mm -hmm. Just say, Lord, I missed the mark. But you're a forgiving God. I ask you to forgive me and help me to do better this next time around, praise God, and He will. Yes, well, Hebrews 4, 16 says that we can come boldly to the throne. Yeah. I want to read it from the New Living. It says, so let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive His mercy and we will find grace to help us when we need it the most. Yeah, and that scripture I did love that. wonders for me when I first came to the Lord back there in 69. And, and not knowing, you know, and not having this revelation on right standing with God. And, you know, you kind of grow up hearing Christians talk about God's going to get you and God's going to do this. And, mm -hmm. and, and you grow up kind of thinking that God must be mean. You know, what do you have to do to get on his good side? Well, when Jesus went to the cross, praise God, you got on the good side of God. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says that he who knew no sin, 2 Corinthians 5.21, Speaking of Jesus, he who knew no sin was made to be sin for us yes. so that we might be made the righteousness of God. And righteousness just simply means right standing with God. Mm -hmm. And because we have right standing with God, then he says, and now you have access to my throne and you can come there boldly. I never have to go to the throne of God kind of ducking and, you know, wondering if he's going to slap me, uh, wondering if he's going to uh, kick me out. No, he says, come boldly. Why? Mm -hmm. Because of what Jesus did at Calvary, I now have right standing with God. And that means that we can stand in his presence as though sin has never occurred. Praise God. Well, it's like I look at it in my life. I don't <clears throat> have to come to your house and, you know, come to the gate and say, dad, mom, is it okay if I come in? you know, because of what I did or the mistakes I made. No, I boldly come in that house because I'm a Seville. That's right. I'm your daughter and I can come in. That's right. And that's a boldness because I have that authority. And I've never noticed you crawling on the floor saying, Please, I'm so Dad, unworthy. Let me in. I'm so unworthy. I don't deserve to eat at this place. 
Right. You don't do that. No. If you did, I'd lay hands on your brain. I'd think <laughs> something's wrong with you. You know, and that's not the way we do with God. Right. And yet, there are entire denominations who have, who have built their beliefs on condemnation. You know, uh, there, are den there are denominations that still go around saying we're just old sinners saved by grace. And you can't be both. You're either an old sinner or you've been saved by grace. Right. You can't be both of them. Right. And, and yet there are denominations that just keep, just keep preaching that and preaching that and preaching that. And there are people come every Sunday and get beat over the head. Well, I'm an old sinner. I'm an old sinner. And if you were to dare say to them, you're the righteousness of God. Oh, not me. There's none righteous. No, not one. Well, that's the way it was before Jesus went to the cross and was made to be sin. There was none righteous. No, not one. But because of what Jesus did, now, praise God, we've been made the righteousness of God. And you know, Romans chapter 3 and Romans chapter 5 really, really, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Really emphasize that. Mm -hmm. And it talks about how that righteousness is a free gift. Right. And that we are to receive it. Not only that, we are to declare it, Paul mm -hmm. says. So righteousness is a free gift. I can't earn it. There's not a thing that I could do. I couldn't get good enough for God to call me righteous. Mm -hmm. So it's a free gift. He tells us to receive it. In fact, there's a scripture. I believe it's 1 Corinthians 15, 34. I may not be right, but I believe that's where it is. And it actually says, awake unto righteousness. Mm -hmm. In other words, wake up to this truth. Wake up to this reality that God has made you righteous. You have right standing with God. He's not against you. He's for you. And Paul says in Romans chapter 8, if God be for you, who can be against you? Praise God. Amen. So today, just forgive yourself. Yeah. Just forgive yourself and know that you have right standing with God and that you are His beautiful, precious, one-of-a-kind child. You're His masterpiece. He's so proud of you. And He doesn't remember your sin. When you've asked for forgiveness, it's over. So the first step is forgiving yourself so that you can walk in that right standing with Him. That's right. Praise God. You know, I wrote in my notes, Cherry, that He has endued man with noble capacities and distinguished him from all other creatures by giving him dominion over all of them. That's good. Amen. He has distinguished us and given us dominion over everything he's created. Job chapter 35 and verse 11 says that he's made us wiser than all other creatures. That's talking about crown with glory and honor. Mm -hmm. And I love the fact that crown with glory and honor once again means that he has pronounced his blessing upon us. He has given us his favor. And so that means that we can walk through the earth every day of our lives with our heads held up high, knowing that God thinks we're somebody special. Mm -hmm. According to Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 13, it says he's made us the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. And that means that God loves us so much that he's already arranged for us to come out on top in every area of our lives if we'll just be obedient to his word. Mm -hmm. I like being the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. That's how much God loves you. He wants you to be on top in every area of your life. And all you have to do is just be obedient to his word. Now, obviously, religion does not teach you anything that we've talked about on this broadcast today. Why? Because they want you to feel inferior. They want you to feel condemned. They want you to be beat down. They want you to feel unworthy. And let me tell you where that doctrine comes from. Satan himself. That is not Christianity. That is a doctrine of the devil. Mm -hmm. And so if that's what you've believed all your life, if I were you, I'd get fighting mad right now and go to the Bible and find out what the Bible says. And Jesus himself said, if you'll continue in my word, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. That's so good. Amen. There's so many promises of God that he has for us. But Satan doesn't want us knowing that. No. He wants us beat down, defeated, not knowing our right standing. That's right. But there's so many promises in his word that are for us. Amen. That we have that right to have everything, abundant life that Jesus talked about. Would you look in the camera and pray for people right now? I know there are people that are watching 
that, that feel inferior. They, they're, they're, Satan just keeps bringing up their past. They feel beat down. Uh, they feel like there's this cloud that just follows them everywhere they go. I want you to pray for them right now. Well, I just want you to get free of this Thank today. You, so join with me in this prayer and let's just get this settled once and for all that you know who you are in Christ. Lord, I just lift up every person yes, that is watching right now. And I believe that down so inside of them that their spirit is stirring and they want the promises that you have for them. They want this right standing that you've promised them. So I'm asking, Lord, that everything that's hindered them and stopped them from having this in their life, that it be removed in Jesus' name, that they're free from yes, their Lord. past. They're free from old hurts, old wounds, old mistakes. They give it to you, Lord, and they lay it at the altar right now. And they step into their freedom. They step into their right standing yes, with Lord. you and become everything that you've called them to be. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And listen, if there are those of you that are watching and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, you know, it's not hard. It's not difficult. Would you allow me to lead you in a prayer right now? If you've never invited Jesus into your heart and to make him the Lord of your life, I want you to just repeat this after me and just mean it with all of your heart. Say this. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I believe in my heart. I believe in my heart that you're the Son of God. That you're the Son of God. That you died for me. That you died for me. Paid the price for my sin. Paid the price for my sin. That I might have peace with God. That I might have peace with God. That I might have right standing with God. That I might have right standing with God. I believe in you. I believe in you. And I receive you. And I receive you right now. Right now. As Lord of my life. As Lord of my life. And Satan. And Satan. In Jesus' name. In Jesus. You are not my God. You are not my God. You have no control over my life. You have no control over my Thank life. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Heavenly for Father. For loving me so much. For loving me so that much. That you sent your son. That you sent your son. To die for me. To die for me. From this moment forward. From this moment forward. I walk with God. I walk with God. Amen and amen. Amen. Praise God. Isn't that great? Praise the Lord. And listen, if you prayed that prayer, why don't you let us know about it? Call our, our office here, our one of the offices. Uh, in the other nations where we have offices, uh, those numbers are on the screen. Our address is on the screen. Also, you can go to jerryseville.org and just let us know that you prayed that prayer because we want to rejoice with you and we want to keep lifting your name up before God and believe that this is going to be the best time of your life. I'm telling you, knowing God, there's just nothing greater than that and walking with Him every day of your life. Listen, Jerry and I'll be back in just a few moments. Watch this announcement, and then we have some closing remarks to share with you. You are the object of God's affection. If you've ever felt insecure about your abilities, your appearance, or your personality, this powerful book is for you. In Your Somebody Special to God, Jerry Savelle teaches that you should be encouraged and expect victory in every situation because you are God's most prized possession. The most challenging battles you will ever face are the ones between your own ears. In the book and accompanying two CD teaching, Thoughts, the battle between your ears, Jerry Savelle gets to the heart of the matter, the matter of the mind. Your life tends to move in the direction of your dominant thoughts. Learn step-by-step step how to win the battle of your thought life. Cast thoughts of shame, embarrassment, and low self-esteem aside today. Call or go online to jerrysavelle.org and request this life-changing trio. You're somebody special to God and the book and two CD teaching, Thoughts, The Battle Between Your Ears. When you win the battle between your ears, you'll enjoy victory in every area of your life. Let me encourage you to order these resources. They're so powerful. This little book, You're Somebody Special to God. You know, it's just a few pages, but I'm telling you, it is full of revelation knowledge. It will have a powerful impact on your life. And this is a little book you can read in just a few minutes, and you might want to read it two or three times, and then pass it on to somebody else that you know is struggling with identity and inferiority and condemnation. It'll be a blessing to them as well. So that's part of this package. Also, the three CDs, Thoughts, The Battle Between Your Ears. That's where your greatest battles are fought is between your ears in your mind. And then also the book by the same title, Thoughts, 
the battle between your ears. So I want to encourage you to order these today while it's fresh in your thinking. Get them in your home. You know, you might want to bring the whole family together and sit down and listen to the CDs, or at least when you're on your way to work, put that CD in there and learn how to take control over your thoughts. Learn how to cast down everything that does not agree with the Word of God and learn how to begin to see yourself the way God sees you. These are powerful tools, aren't well, they? Well, this is one of my favorites that you've ever done and I really got freedom in this area because it was a stronghold mm -hmm. where I'd, let, I'd entertain those thoughts yeah. and I encourage you. You know, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God and what I do is I listen to faith building material every single day. And when I say every single day, I mean it because this girl needs it. Yeah, so we all do. I, I put this in my car and I listen all the time. So don't delay. Go to go online right now, jerryseville.org or call the phone number and order right now. And we'll Amen. send it to you as soon as possible. Amen. I know you're going to enjoy it. And listen, we're going to continue talking about your Somebody Special to God on next week's broadcast. Jerry Ann will be with me once again. It's going to be a powerful lesson and I believe it's going to help you. And if you know somebody that's struggling with thoughts and they're battling over their identity and they don't like themselves and they're down on themselves, tell them about the broadcast. Tell them to watch. And listen, also, don't forget all of our social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Take advantage of those things because they're available to you to help you in your walk with God and to help you in your spiritual growth. It's been a joy sharing the Word with you today. And listen, also, partners, thank you. You're the reason why that we are able to continue to increase and expand and touch more lives. Thank you, partners, for believing in us. Thank you for your faithfulness. And we believe in Jesus' name that this is going to be a time of breaking loose in your life, breaking loose of God's favor, blessing, and financial prosperity like you've never experienced before. Once again, thank you for watching. We'll see you again next week. And until then, remember this, Jerry and Jerry telling you your faith will overcome the world. Next week. You know, just be yourself and let God use you the way He made you. Now, here's how you can, you can get over all of that. Let me read a scripture to you. John chapter 17 and verse 23. Now this is Jesus praying to the Father. And in the latter part of that verse, He says, Father, you have loved them as thou has loved me. He's talking about the disciples, and those who would become future disciples. He's saying, Father, show them that you love them as much as you love me.